the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to our world of mystery and the macabre. Sit back and lend us your fears. Have you ever seen a ghost? It is an experience of such horror as to turn your blood to ice. Oh, I know, I know, there are those who scoff. But they have never met a ghost. mystery drama, The Ghost Driver, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Augusta Dabney and Mason Adams. Do ghosts exist? Mel Stout doesn't think so, but his wife Liz feels differently. If it had been up to Liz, they'd never have bought Gormley Lodge on top of Manitou Mountain in Colorado. Why? Because according to the local legend, the former owners, the Putnams, had been sent crashing to their death by a ghost driver who came at them head on. Now, in the living room of the lodge... Liz, I've had it up to here with that brother of yours. Oh, now, I mean, he promised to help finish painting his living room before the Duncans arrived tonight, and where is he? Mel, I'll tell you he... where he is. He is out on the slope skiing, enjoying himself, as usual. Well, do you just be reasonable. Now, if we didn't have Rory, where would we get a ski instructor, I'd like to know? We certainly can't afford to hire one, any more than we could afford to have this place painted. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that I've, I've got so darn much on my mind... Liz, I, I just hope that I haven't made the mistake of my life and yours. We'll make a go of the lodge. We're off to a pretty good start. The Duncans arrive tonight and they're booked for a full week. And the Todds and the Morgans arrive next week. Yeah, and after that? Well, darling, our newspaper ads ought to get us more customers. Just ask yourself, darling, what would you rather be doing now? Painting the living room of your own ski lodge with paying guests arriving tonight or slaving away at your old accounting job in Aspen? Well, at least that brought a check in every week. Oh, Mel, you've wanted to be your own boss for years. And so we bought this old mansion on top of Manitou Mountain to start our own ski lodge, the old Gormley Mansion. And we're going to keep at it until we make a success of it. <laughs> Liz, you're marvelous. Oh, there's somebody at the front door. I'll get it. Oh. Oh, Mrs. Gormley. I'm coming to pay you a visit, Miss Stout. My first formal visit. Well, that's very good of you, Mrs. Gormley. Oh, well, won't you come in? All right, Jason. You heard the lady. Wheel me in. Yes, Mother. You know my son, Jason? You've met? Yes. Yes, briefly. Mel? The Gormleys have come to pay a visit. I see you, Mrs. Gormley. Jason, I uh, hope you don't mind if I finish this painting. Oh, go right ahead. I'd give you a hand, old as I am, but my arthritis keeps me in this wheelchair. Jason, why no, don't you... No, thanks. I couldn't think of asking a fine arts painter to Fine do... arts? You hear that, Jason? Mr. Stout complimented you. Call the mountain scenes you paint fine art. Well, they are. Why, I saw some of them in the ski shop in town. They're very good. Do you sell many? A few. Oh, just enough to cover the cost of the paint and canvas. Oh, yes, and a quart of whiskey now and then. Mother, please. Well, now, they, if they don't hear it from me, Jason, they'll hear it from others. Or to drink now and then. Now and then. Tell the Stouts how you play Russian roulette with that old revolver of your father's when you're drunk. Stop it, Mother, stop well, it. Perhaps you'd like some coffee, Mrs. Gormley, or, or tea. It won't take a minute. No, 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 thank you. We won't be here that long. Now, I've come to do for you what I did for the Putnams. Them that bought my house out from under me three years ago. Out from under you? Mrs. Gormley, are you saying that, that we have done that? Forced you out of your house? Well, haven't you? Oh, it's not your fault. Jason's father left us destitute. Left me destitute, I should say. 
with a son too lazy to support his old mother. So I had to sell this beautiful place. Mother, the Stouts aren't interested in all this past history. Well, they'd better be if they value their lives. Value our lives? Well, Mr. Halliday didn't tell you, of course. Tell us what? About how the Putnams met their death. Why, yes. The real estate man told us about the accident. That was no accident. No more than my husband's death was an accident. He died in the same way? His car crashed off the bridge into the gorge? Right. 800 feet down into the gorge. To the rocks 800 feet below. But no accident. Suicide. The Putnams didn't commit suicide. Not them. My husband, Jason Sr., raving drunk and suicidal. But theirs was no accident either, the Putnams. He drove them off that bridge. Who? My husband? Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Gormley. If your husband was dead... Hi. I am back. Oh, sure. Naturally, Rory. Now, the painting job is nearly done. Oh, now, don't get up tight, Mel. I, I just didn't remember it till I was out on the slopes. Hi, Mrs. Gormley. Jason. Uh, paying a little social call? Anything but social. Mrs. Gormley, are you saying that your husband, even though he was dead, somehow killed the Putnams? Liz, come on now. All right, I'll tell you. After my husband's death, when I realized I'd been left penniless, that I'd have to sell this place, I fell into a state of depression. When the Putnams bought Gormley Lodge... Well, they were going to use it as a winter home, not turn it into a ski resort like you. When they bought it, and I had to move into the little guest house, I was so sad I thought I'd die. For days and days I sat and wept, and and then, in one night, my husband come to me. Your husband? You dreamed? It was no dream. Oh, it was my husband. His ghost. Oh, for the love. Rory, Rory. I stood at the foot of my bed. And he begged my forgiveness for leaving me a pauper and breaking my heart. And he said, Jessica, I promise you'll live in Gormley House again. And then he, he vanished. The very next night, the Putnams crashed through the bridge over Gormley Gorge. Well, accidents do happen. It was no accident. Oh, the real estate man didn't tell you the whole story. Mrs. Putnam lived long enough to tell just what had happened. You can ask the sheriff. The Putnams didn't go off the bridge by accident. They were driven off it. Forced to swerve off it by an oncoming car. A car driven by a skeleton. Good heavens. And that's what I wanted to tell you. And now you know. Good day. Well, what kind of a put-on is this? She's trying to scare us out of here. I'm trying to save your lives. You're trying to get back into this house. That's what you're doing. Just the way you moved back after the Putnams got killed and lived here a full three years until now. Rory, have some respect Respect? For the... No way. She may be old, but she's as shrewd as they come. She frightens you off, then moves back in again and stays until some other sucker comes I along. I warn you, Just you're... let us know when your husband's ghost shows up again. It did. What? Last night. Oh, man, this is the neatest ripoff. Oh, shut ever... up, Rory, will you? Your husband's ghost? Last night? Yes. And he used the same words. Jessica, I promise you'll live in Gormley Lodge again. Oh, I beg you, listen to me. The Putnams wouldn't and went to their death. Oh, Mrs. Gormley, you're really out of sight. You, you, know... you so smart. You're so sure of yourself. You think he isn't watching and listening, my husband? Do you think he doesn't know how you insulted me? Do you think he'll not repay you? Oh, yes. If people are to die this time, too, you will be the first. Now, be warned. Jason, wheel me back. Be warned. Rory, you shouldn't have talked to Mrs. Gormley like that. You didn't spring for that crazy story, did you? I don't know. I wonder. What, Liz? Mel, call the sheriff. Find out if Mrs. Gormley's telling the truth. Oh, come on, Liz. I look like a fool. Anyhow, I've got to finish this paint job. What? Liz, you're not... 
I must find out. Suit yourself. You always do. Sheriff Harper speaking. Oh, Sheriff. Uh, this is Elizabeth Stout calling. We're the new owners of Gormley House. Oh, oh, yes. What can I do for you, Mrs. Stout? Well, we just had a visit from Mrs. Gormley. Oh. What do you mean, oh? Oh, nothing, Mrs. Stout, only she can be a little hard to take, getting on in years. Yes, well, what I wanted to ask you, of course you remember the accident to the Putnams three years ago, crashing off the bridge over Gormley Gorge. Yes, yes, I remember. Well, according to Mrs. Gormley, Mrs. Putnam lived long enough to tell you what had caused the accident. Is that so? Uh, yes, it is. And what did she tell you? Well, now, Mrs. Stout, she was near death. Maybe out of her head with pain and shock. What did she tell you, Sheriff? Did she tell you that they had been forced to swerve off the bridge because of another car that came straight at them? A car with a skeleton driving it? Well, as I said, she was out of her did head. Did she? Yes, that's the story she told. Thank you. Goodbye. So? Mrs. Gormley told the truth. A putting a woman was dying. Anybody in that condition is liable to say anything. I suppose. Now, look, just, just, just get off it, Liz. We put our life savings, every cent we've got in this place, and I'm not leaving, ghost or no ghost. Well, speaking of leaving, I'd better get on down into Manitou and pick up the Duncans at the airport. Well, it's a bit early, isn't it? Or have you got some cute chick in town that you'd like to spend an hour or so with? <laughs> Mel, you put me away. Don't give me any ideas, Rory. This is some road, Rory. You drive it often? In the dark, I mean? A few times, Mr. Duncan. Well, it's frightfully steep and curvy. Now, don't push the panic button, Mrs. Duncan. I'll get you to the top of Manitou Mountain safe enough. You'll be enjoying a hot toddy in front of the fireplace at Gormley Lodge before you know it. Uh -oh. uh, maybe, uh, maybe you better slow down a little. Ah, oh, it's okay. That was just a patch of loose shale. You much of a skier, Mr. Duncan? Oh, I do okay. My wife will need some lessons, though. I uh, take it Gormley Lodge has a pro. Oh, the best. Me. Oh. <laughs> well, fine, fine. Uh, say, this road is steep and curvy. Must be pretty spectacular. Views, I mean, in the daytime. It's spectacular enough right now, what I can see in the headlights. We've got some views, all right. Here's one. It's real cool. From the bridge over Gormley Gorge. Steep? 800 feet straight down. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's too bad there isn't a moon tonight. I'd stop on the bridge and let you have a look. What's that sound? We're crossing the bridge now. A wooden bridge over Gormley Gorge. About 500 feet across. Hey, what's the lights of a car coming fast? A damn fool is coming straight at us. Get over! It's a skeleton! A skeleton driving that car! Hey, we're going off the bridge! <laughs> Have you ever seen a ghost, I asked you? Well, if you haven't seen one before, you've seen one now. I don't know about you, but I'd like to take a break to, well, steady my nerves. I'll be back shortly with Act Two, if you have the nerve to return, that is. unless you have experienced it, is only a word. I could employ all the art at my command, my voice, the words I choose, to convey to you the full impact of terror. Yet, I know I should fail, even as Michael Duncan fails now in telling his story to Sheriff Harper on the bridge over Gormley Gorge the next morning. Terror? You say you experience terror? What would you experience, Sheriff? The light? Mr. Duncan, I'm only trying to get at what happened here last Excuse night. Excuse me, Sheriff. Yes, Mr. Stout, what is it? <sighs> Will it be much longer before they get the, the bodies up? It's hard to say. Why? I'd like to get back to the lodge. My wife is alone, and you can imagine her condition after hearing of her brother's death. 
Say nothing of how it happened. Sure, sure, you go ahead. I'll let you know when you're needed to identify the bodies. I'm sorry about your brother-in-law, Mr. Stout. And the publicity. Publicity? And this is the second time the ghost driver has struck. Ghost driver? And the news has got out. I hear they're sending reporters over from Aspen. That's great. That's just what I need. That'll end my ski resort business for good. Not that it ever got started. Uh, wait a few minutes and I'll ride back up with you. Nothing I can do either till they recover Jill's body. Oh, yes, there is, Mr. Duncan. You can give me a full account. Oh, look, Sheriff, I've told you all I know. We were driving across this bridge when we saw this other car coming straight at us. Stout's brother-in-law was driving. He swerved to avoid the oncoming car and went through the guardrail. In the split second between swerving and going through the rail, I leapt clear and saved myself. I wish I could say the same for that boy and, and Jill, my wife. About the skeleton at the wheel of the other car... Why do you keep harping on that? Because it's something to harp on. If you saw a skeleton driving that car... I didn't. You said... I know what I said, but... But I've got to be wrong. I couldn't have seen what I thought I did. Why not? Because I don't believe in skeletons driving cars. I don't believe in ghosts. Now, take it easy, Mr. Duncan. All I'm after is a complete report. The fact. All you're after is the publicity you're going to get out of this. Put you on the map, won't it, Sheriff? Why, you might even get a job in one of the big Colorado ski resorts like Aspen or Vail. That'll be enough, Mr. Duncan. You can go. I'll phone the lodge when I need you. Mrs. Gormley. Well, invite me in, Miss Stout. Oh, y yes, of, of course. Uh, yes, I'm... Well, I'm surprised to see that you're not in a wheelchair. Oh, it depends on how bad my arthritis kicks up. Sometimes I can walk with a cane, like now. I see. Is your husband home? No. He's down at the bridge with Mr. Duncan. Oh, the fellow whose wife got killed, huh? Yes. Well, I'm sorry about that. Sorry about your brother, too. Even though he asked for Mrs. it. Mrs. Gormley, I... I, I your I brother's dead because he wouldn't listen. He wouldn't heed my warning. Now you listen, child. You heed my warning. Make your husband listen and take warning, too. You leave this place. Leave it today. Don't think I wouldn't. We wouldn't if we could. But we can't. All our savings are tied up at Gormley oh, Lodge. listen to me, listen. Now, my dead husband came to me again last night. And he promised me again I'd return to this house. You love this old house, don't you? Well, it was my life. You're a woman. You understand how that is. Yes. I came here a bride 40 years ago. Jason, senior, that is. He was just starting his career as a painter. Jason, my son, was born here. There was another child, a little girl. She died here. No, this house isn't made of wood and stone. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. Oh, I think they've come back. Yes. My husband and Mr. Duncan are back. And I'll go then. Oh, well, Mrs. Gormley, I'm going to put some coffee on. You stay. Have a cup. No. I can't bear to go on looking at people who I know are going to die. What's this? Die? Who, who, who's going to die now? You are, Mr. Stout. You and your wife. If you don't heed my warning and leave... As soon as possible. Now, what's all this, Stout? Who is this woman? Jessica Gormley used to own this place. Oh, the woman you told me about. The one who claims her husband's ghost visits her. I don't just claim it. It's true. Who are you? My name's Michael Duncan. Ah, oh, yes, yes. The one whose wife went to her death in the gorge last night. Well, you take my advice, too. You leave here. Leave as fast as you can. How about a drink, Stout? Oh, so you two won't listen. The ghost driver killed your wife last night, and yet you won't listen. Well, let me warn you once and for all. You... What was that? Uh, a shot. It was a gunshot. Jason! Oh, it's happened. He's killed himself. Oh. She's fallen. 
Now, Liz, help her up and keep her here. Duncan, you come with me. Out. What do you want? Ah, oh, you're okay, Jason. We heard a gunshot. What of it? Well, we've heard of you and your little games, like Russian roulette, and we thought that, that you... I'd shot myself? No such luck. Come in, if you want to. Oh, the, uh, the gunshot we heard. I fired it. Deliberately. You fired that shot deliberately? You ask a lot of questions for someone I haven't even met. It's Mike Duncan. He and his wife are to be my first guests. It was... His wife who got killed last night. Oh. I'm sorry. How did you escape? Flung myself from the car just before it went through the guardrail. Well, you'd better keep an eye out for the old man's ghost. He'll be after you. Now, Mr. Gormley, I don't believe in ghosts. Now, why did you fire that revolver? What business is it? A... All right. I'll tell you. You'll think it's nutty. I'm sure. I've been playing Russian roulette with this gun for years, ever since my father died. And I always win, or lose, depending on how you look at it. And how do you look at it, Jason? I give it to you straight, Mr. Stout. I want to lose. For years now, I've picked up the gun, like this. Oh, no, not every day. Maybe once a week, once every other week. Whenever the mood comes on me. And I put it to my temple. Like this. Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't worry. Gun's empty. I haven't put in a fresh bullet yet. You see, the reason I deliberately fired that bullet I had in this gun was to find out if the thing was a dud. It wasn't. Too bad. May I shake your hand, Mr. Duncan? You're the first man I've ever met who says what he thinks. You want to kill yourself? Go ahead. <laughs> I like you. You do speak your mind. And now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to this painting of mine. By the way, what do you think of it? Pretty lurid, isn't it? <laughs> That's just the right word for it, Mr. Stout. See? There's the car swerving and crashing through the bridge. The oncoming ghost car with the skeleton at the wheel. All in flaming color. I knock out one an hour. I slap a frame on it and I sell it in Manitou for 20 bucks. So excuse me, will you? Business is going to pick up. Thanks to last night. And I want to be ready to supply the demand. Uh, it's been a rough 24 hours, Miss Stout. It's a nice chair. Just right for sitting in front of a fire. <laughs> Cost you plenty, I'll bet. Yes, plenty. But that isn't what I'm thinking about. You're thinking about your brother and my wife lying in their coffins at the undertakers in Manitou. Yes, and also that even a small village like Manitou has an undertaker. Birth, death, taxes. The only sureties in life, Mrs. Stamp. Liz. Mike. I, uh, I like your husband. Me too. He told me about everything. About what getting this ski resort means to you. Your life savings invested, all that. All down the drain, I'm afraid. The publicity? What else? Every reservation's canceled. Well, all except one. But that'll come in, too. It has, Liz. Yes? There it is. Please cancel my reservation for next week, Frank Norton. As a family of four. Telegram phoned in from Aspen. Anybody got a sponge? A sponge? So I can throw it in. I'm through, Mike. You always give up this easy? What do you mean, easy? Just that. Do you always fade when the going gets tough? Well, this is the time to start fighting. Does it make good sense to let all this go down the drain because somebody's playing a trick on you? A murderous trick? Do you think it's a trick? What else could it be? A skeleton driving a ghost car? What else but a trick? Well, what else? You were in that car last night. You saw. And it was a skeleton behind the wheel of the oncoming car. You told the sheriff that. You can still say that... That it was a trick, yes. What kind of trick? 
Damn it, Mike, you admit you saw a skeleton driving a car, but you can still call it a trick? Uh, see, I see you don't answer. Uh, look, Mel, I'm a practical man, a businessman. You think being a businessman is simple? Oh, no. I've had troubles that would make yours look like, like nothing. Today you won't find anybody more successful than me. But I've been bankrupt twice. Yes, and paid off every cent. How? Well, not by running away the way you want to, but by standing up and fighting. And that's what you've got to do right now. How? You tell me how and I'll do it. Uh, we'll, we'll do it together. I've got a stake in this too, you know. My wife is dead. Murdered. Yes, murdered. Not by a ghost, but by a trick. And if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to find out who played that trick and make him pay. And you don't think it's a ghost. Do you? Answer me. Do you believe in ghosts? Did you believe before you came here and ran into this mess you're in? Well, no, I didn't. Then why start believing now? <laughs> ghosts, my foot. Now this is a trick. Somebody wants to stop you from turning Gormley Lodge into a ski resort. And if you ask me, it's the Gormleys. One or the other or both is behind all this. Or that sheriff down in Manitou. The sheriff? Oh, Mike, you don't really think that the sheriff... I don't know what to think, Liz. All I know is that somebody's behind this. And those are the three likeliest suspects. Now, look, I'm, I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but I've got a brain. And I've got guts. And... And... Well, my wife is dead. My, my Jill. Well, I, I'm just going to find out who killed her, that's all. Tough as they are. You like a drink, Mike? No, no. No, thanks. I'll be okay. Especially when I nail that murderer. What What have you got in mind? Well, it'll be dark in about an hour. We take the car, Mel. You and me. We take the car, and we drive up and down that road. All night, if necessary. To meet up with this so-called ghost driver. And when and if we meet up with him. Yes. If and when you meet up with him, what? We don't turn aside. We don't swerve out of his path and off the bridge. We drive straight at him and keep driving at him. If he's a ghost in a ghost car, we'll drive through him. And if he isn't? If he isn't? <laughs> well, if he isn't, it'll be one hell of a crash. You. You out there listening. What would you do? If you were Mel Stout, would you accept Mike Duncan's challenge? If you were Liz Stout, would you let your husband accept it? It can mean his death, you know. What exactly would you do? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Two men are now driving the twisting, precipitous mountain road that leads to Gormley Lodge. One, Mike Duncan, believes that the ghost driver they hope to meet is nothing but a trick. Mel Stout, his life savings, every penny at stake, has had no choice but to go along. Mike, I'm bushed. Let's make this the last trip. Uh-uh. We're going to drive up and down this road till dawn. Yes, and night after night if we have to. Until we meet up with our so-called ghost driver. This is the sixth time we've been up and down this mountain road. Okay. Pull over. I'll drive. Get out your side. I'll slip behind the wheel. Yeah. Hey. There's a car coming up behind us. Red light flash. That must be the sheriff. Yeah, it's the sheriff, all right. And Mr. Stout. Oh, and you, Mr. Duncan. What are you doing here, Sheriff? Well, that's what I want to ask you. I got a report from Mountain View House across the valley there that they were seeing headlights going up and down this road. Guess I don't have to tell you everybody around here is on edge after what happened last night. Now, what are you up to? We're not up to anything, Sheriff. We're driving this road in hopes of meeting up with whoever or whatever killed my wife and Mr. Stout's brother-in-law. Well, get yourselves killed in the bargain? Oh, no. You drive on up to Gormley Lodge, and when you get there, stay there. You make that sound like an order, sir. That's what it is, Mr. Stout. Well, I, I guess we better do like he says, Mike. 
I don't think so. Oh, you don't? No, I don't. This is a public road. We've got a right to be on it. Unless we're doing something that breaks the law, and we're not. You're a kind of troublemaker, Mr. Duncan, aren't you? Sheriff, I never go looking for trouble. But I know how to handle it when it comes my way. Now, either you arrest us for breaking some law or other, in which case you'd better be prepared to back it up or I'll sue the town of Manitou and you for false arrest, or get off our backs. I'm not on your backs. I'm trying to save your lives. Take my advice Advice, and... huh? I thought it was an order. All right, wise guy. Have it your way. Go ahead and get killed and, and be damned to you. Ah... Uh. Let's go, Mel. You can sure sound tough, Mike. Well, no small-town sheriff pushes me around. Well, he's only trying to do his job. Maybe. And maybe not. What do you mean? I don't know. But that's what we're going to find out. Tonight, tomorrow night, or whenever. Oh, there's the bridge ahead. Yeah, maybe you better slow down. No. If it's a ghost, we'll go through it. If it isn't, Mike... Headlights coming toward us. Now, look, don't lose your nerve. Coming closer. We're going to crash if you don't... Mike! Driving that car, it's roaring! Your brother-in-law, my God! But, Mel, Mike, I can't believe it. Can't believe it myself, Liz. Not only what we saw, but getting out of it with our lives. The fates were with us, Mel. I, I lost my nerve. I have to admit that. I just couldn't keep driving straight at that... that awful thing coming toward us. I, I couldn't help myself. I, I swerved at the last second. Well, thank God we hit that stanchion instead of going off the bridge. But Rory driving the other car, it's impossible. Rory's dead. We're burying him tomorrow. Rory's dead, that's for sure. But it was Rory driving that car, that's for sure, too. Then... Then ghosts do exist? Mel? Yes, huh? After the funeral tomorrow, let's get out of here. Let's go away from this place as fast as we can. And go where? Back to Aspen, of course. Liz, we're broke. We haven't enough dough left for a motel room. Where would we stay? How would we live? Uh, Mel, I, I, I didn't know things were that bad for you. Putting this place back in shape cost me just about every penny I had. Well, look, would a loan help? You, you'd you be willing to... Well, sure. I like you two, and, well, the way things turned out, we've gotten to know each other real fast. Practically friends. So, well, if you can use a loan... That's generous of you, Mike. Uh, it, is, it is generous of you, Mike, and I appreciate it, but... No, thanks. What'll you do? Do what you said I ought to do. Fight this thing. Liz, Mike, if you ever come east, be sure to look me up. We will, Mike. Yes, of course. You, you won't change your mind about the loan? Can't. We'll only be putting off what's bound to happen. Unless... Unless what? Unless I can find the answer to what goes on here. There's something bothering me, something I feel that I saw somewhere, but didn't pay much attention to at the time. Well, what about it, this this something? It's just something that's bothering me as all. Something that just could give me the answer to all of this. Hmm. Well, good luck. You deserve it. Oh, there's the taxi that's going to take me to the airport. Goodbye, Liz. Goodbye, Mike. Bye-bye, Mike, Bye -bye. and thanks. Well, we'd... we'd better get on back, Liz. Liz, you coming? Yes. Mel, you better know it now. No matter what you intend to do, I won't be staying. Mel, we've got to face the facts. Buying this place was a big mistake, I admit it now. But there's no sense in crying over spilt milk. What's done is done. So, darling, let's just turn our backs on it, walk away from it, and start again. Start what again? The treadmill of office work? 
The dreary day-to-day -day monotony of auditing accounts, toting up figures. I can't bear to go back to that kind of life. I have got to make a go of this. I don't have any other choice. But is it worth your life? Ghost or no ghost, Mel, it's killed four people. It would have been six if you and Mike Duncan hadn't been lucky enough to hit that stanchion. And it will be six if you insist on driving that road again tonight. Six? How, how, how do you make it six? Well, you don't think I'm going to let you do it alone, do you? But at the funeral, you said that... You said that, that you weren't even going to stay. Because I hoped that would change your mind. But it hasn't. So, you see, I have no choice either. <laughs> Just like last night with Mike. From the top of the mountain down to Manitou, then back up again and again, and no sign of him. But he did show, finally. And Mike lost his nerve, swerved aside at the last second. Let's hope I don't lose mine. Will it matter? What do you mean? Well, if you lose your nerve, we'll go off the bridge. If you don't, and the ghost car isn't a ghost car, we'll be killed in the crash. If there is a crash, but there won't be. You seem awfully sure of that. I am. Remember at the cemetery I told Mike there was something I had seen but hadn't paid any attention to? Yes. And that if I could only remember what it was, I'd have the answer to all of this? Yes. Well, it's come to me. Driving up and down the mountain tonight, it suddenly came to me. See, it wasn't something I'd seen. It was something I'd heard and paid no attention to. Something I knew but didn't realize what it meant. And if I'm right, Liz, if I'm right... What is it? What did you remember? We're on the bridge now. Let me concentrate on driving. Mel? Mel! Mel, there it is. The ghost car is coming straight for us. Yes. And behind the wheel, driving it, it's Rory! Oh, my God, it's Rory! Oh, we buried Rory! But then it's his ghost, Mel! Get your hands off the wheel! Mel, Don't try to turn we're the gonna, wheel! We're going to crash! Help. Mel! Mel! Mel? What? What? This time he swerved and he went off the bridge just as I knew he would. How? How did you know? Later, Liz. Right now, we better get up to the lodge and phone the sheriff. Oh. Oh. Come in, Mrs. Gormley. Mel? Mrs. Gormley's here. Please, won't you sit down? Yeah, thank you. Hello, Mrs. Gormley. I'm sorry about last night. I'm not. Mrs. Gormley, Jason was your son. Oh, he was the torment of my life. Every day I lived. Of course, I'm sorry he's dead, but... Well, I can only be glad it's over for me. Did you know that your son was the ghost driver? I suspected, but I was never sure. You see, it was Jason who wanted to go on living here in this house far more than I did. Oh, you can understand. He was born here. He grew up here. Started his painting career here in a fine, big studio upstairs. Tragic. Just tragic. Even more tragic if it hadn't been for you. How did you come to know? What made you realize that my son was the ghost driver? A gunshot. A gunshot? The shot he fired to see whether the bullet he used for playing Russian roulette was live or not. Well, I don't, I don't follow you. You see, something kept bugging me, Mrs. Gormley, but I, I couldn't nail it down because I kept thinking it was something that I'd seen. But then suddenly I realized it wasn't something I'd seen, but something I'd heard. That gunshot. I, I still See, don't... See, it, it, it got me to thinking about Jason playing Russian roulette, playing with life and death. And that got me to thinking a step further. Sure, Russian roulette, only a fool or a would-be suicide would play it. But the fact remains that the odds are in his favor. Every time Jason spun the barrel of that gun and pulled the trigger... The chances were five to one against firing the bullet. Oh, but, but what was the connection between that and, and the ghost driver? Driving a car straight at another car is just another form of Russian roulette. Ah, oh, yes, I see. Well, Sheriff Harper came to see me. 
And he said, Jason was wearing a mask, mm. a paper mache mask of your brother's face. Yes, and it wasn't a very good likeness of my brother, but it didn't have to be. It looked enough like him to fool you when you saw it under those awful conditions. The night and the headlights and, and the car coming straight at you. Fear did the rest. There must be another mask, the skeleton face. Oh, there is. We, we, we searched the studio and we found it, Sheriff Harper and me. Yeah, well, it's all over. Jason's at peace at last. God knows I soon shall be. Well, good day. It's funny, though. What, Mrs. Gormley? Well, we've searched and we've searched. But we couldn't find a mask of my husband's face. What made you think there was one? Well, you see, when I heard about the masks, I thought it must have been Jason who came and stood at the foot of my bed. Not my husband's ghost. But if it wasn't Jason, who was it? What was it? <laughs> An interesting question. What was it indeed? Makes you wonder. Does the spirit live on? Are there such things as ghosts? Think about it. I'll be back shortly. I think you'll be glad to know that Mel and Liz made a go of Gormley Lodge and are today the owners of a successful ski resort. Old Mrs. Gormley passed on a few years ago. When the guest cottage was renovated, a really thorough search was made for that mask of Jason Sr.'s face, but no sign of it was ever found. Curious, very. Our cast included Augusta Dabney, Mason Adams, Mary Jane Higby, Norman Rose, Nick Pryor, and Leon Janney. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.